It's the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160 and WCCSradio.com. And good morning to you. Indiana Community Garden. That's the next topic for us this morning in our conversation with Justin and Tristan brought to you by Marcus and Mac voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Justin Kurtz, Tristan Kristoff with us this morning. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning, Todd. Good to have you both with us here today. So the community garden uh, is uh, something that maybe folks uh, aren't aware of. It's, it's actually a pretty cool thing. Uh, and uh, you've got a uh, summer festival coming up to sort of celebrate what you are and, and let people know what you do. Yeah, uh, the Indiana Community Garden is located in Mack Park on the corner of South 6th Street and Carter Avenue. And we actually offer weekly programs um, that we want to drive the engagement for with this summer festival that we have coming up on Saturday, August 17th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's one of the places where you can actually see how does your garden grow when you go by uh, Mac Park. Uh, You can actually watch the garden in progress. Uh, And so what happens at this festival? So at the summer garden festival that we've been putting together, we're going to have it set from 3 to 7 p.m., again, on Saturday, August 17th. And from 3 to 5, we're going to have the Garden of Ideas, which will have fun activities for all ages. And so what that means is we're going to be bringing in multiple community vendors and organizations to do community-based activities. So we're going to have face painting, tables. We're going to have somebody who's teaching a yoga class there. That's right, get the stretches in. (laughs) We're going to be giving out garden tours to show off the garden. And then from 5 to 7 p.m., we're going to be having food and beverages from food trucks and food vendors coming in from Frank's Red Hot Rocket, Hello Concierge Mocktails, and Noble Stein Brewing Company. Yeah, yeah. Let people come by and, and actually experience the garden for themselves, which, of course, has been growing since the season began. Uh, So let's talk a little bit about the garden itself and how many people are involved in it this year. So this year we have an administrative base of about 10 people on our main administrative team. Mm -hmm. But we get the help from hundreds of volunteers every year. So that might include IUP college students or um, just dedicated community members. We have members of the Church of Latter-day Saints partner with us. We have members of other churches come in. Um, basically, anybody that wants to get involved in a community activity can come and help out. Mm-hmm. Weekly, we have our community time on Wednesday evenings and Thursday mornings, and that's really a time for people to gather together and help promote our mission statement of sustainable food access in the area through mm-hmm. gardening practices. All right, so some of the things being grown this year include... We're growing a lettuce plot. We had garlic grow over winter that we recently harvested. We have a apple orchard as well as many local um, berries around the premises. So that would include elderberries, uh, raspberries, etc. We have multiple beds for um, private lending so people can grow their own things. But on our community beds, we stick to things that are more local and don't harm. Mm -hmm. So it would be the things that I mentioned before. And we also do have our pollinator meadow, which is created as a safe space for our local pollinators to bring in monarch butterflies through our native plants and flowers. Yeah, yeah. Now, Justin, you've got a community, a Pittsburgh, Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank uh, shirt on today. Um, is there an involvement there or just happened to be what you picked out of the closet? Today? No, I, I appreciate you asking that. So I work for the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, uh, doing outreach for the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program or SNAP. Um, it used to be called food stamps. So colloquially or on the street, it might still be called food stamps. But um, in addition to doing outreach for um, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program or SNAP, Um, We have a collective impact kind of method of of reaching the community and ensuring that we're not just uh, we're not just uh, talking the talk, we're walking the walk, too, in terms of understanding um, that food security isn't just about meeting people's needs in terms of let's just get them food or even let's get them signed up for SNAP. Both of those things are outstanding for improving access. Uh, But what if we could improve community food security through agricultural education via, you know, garden experiences and so Mm -hmm. forth. And so that is the involvement is uh, via my work position with the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank and our mission to achieve lasting solutions to hunger um, by leveraging the power of community. Uh, An example, 
would be this summer festival. We want to see the power community come out. Let's let's have a dialogue about what gardening can do for uh, for our community, for individuals that uh, may be experiencing food insecurity, which is the lack of you know sufficient nutrition to have a ha- healthy, active lifestyle at all times. Uh, and so that that's really what the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank is here for. Is uh, for mostly I do snap outreach, but again just to achieve lasting solutions to hunger and to root causes by leveraging the power of community. Yeah, people back in the 1940s, um, they're they're getting older now, um, but those who were kids back in the 1940s might even remember the Victory Garden. That's correct. Uh, that was grown uh, by uh, by everybody in support of uh, the nation itself, but uh, of uh, the, the fighting forces uh, that were involved in World War II. And the whole concept then moves forward. Uh, and in the 1960s, uh, it had a resurgence. It continues now today with something like this. Tristan, it uh, uh, must be... Uh, Pretty exciting to see that it's actually taken more than just a little bit of a foothold here in Indiana. It's it's something that folks really get involved in. Yeah, we really benefit from the community involvement that we see from the dedicated members around us. And we've actually been able to kind of extend our reach and make a sister garden at the Chevy Chase Community Center called the Chevy Chase Food Forest. Mm -hmm. So it's been really great to see how the Indiana Community Garden has been growing, not only in size, but also in its impact on the community in a positive way to get everybody kind of invested towards a common goal. Yeah, and and to watch people um, who understand, and and generally those involved in the community garden are people who for a long time have understood how much... uh, uh, food security is an important issue and is uh, something that we can all play a hand in. Uh, to see them all come together like this has to be pretty gratifying. Yeah, it's great. I, um, you know, I've been involved with the community garden for about two years. Um, I came on as a volunteer and then transitioned into a paid role through IUP's work study program. Um, and it's been really great to see how the systems have been able to grow and extend onto campus Mm -hmm. Um, just since I've started. You know, we've had such a great pull for such a long time, but it continues to grow even since I've, even since I have come on two years ago, it's been great. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Justin, are there programs similar to this one in other communities and other counties? Uh, Not that I know of, um, but that's also very strictly that I know of um, simply because I, I work specifically in Indiana and Cambria counties. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I know that there are opportunities where there uh, communities are trying to get something like a community garden with as much resources as Indiana community garden. And by resources, I'm not just talking like physical assets. I'm talking the social assets that come from like Tristan's talking about the hundreds of volunteers, the strong administrative board. It's very difficult to get a sustainable community garden where you can get that much capital and not, again, not just uh, money, you know, and physical capital, but get all those people there uh, to to have those, that social resources and the social capital where it's sustainable and things actually get done in a a timely manner and so forth. So to my knowledge, Indiana is probably a leader in the community garden space in terms of, again, like I said, being able to construct such a we have such a community in the community garden by design, mm-hmm. and uh, I think that that's a quite the remarkable achievement for Indiana. Yeah, yeah, I know Homer City has a, a nice community garden uh, that uh, folks all contribute to, and uh, and they have programs that they do as well. Uh, this program though gets celebrated on the seventeenth. Um, Tristan, give us the hours again and and, and the the general um, procedures of what's going to happen on that day. Thank you. So on Saturday, August 17th in Mack Park, we're going to be having the Garden of Ideas from 3 to 5. And then from 5 to 7, we're going to grow our community with the food and beverages. And again, that's going to be August 17th in Mack Park, the Summer Festival for Indiana Community Garden. Mm -hmm. And anybody can come. Yes, anybody anybody can come. It's free. Yes. No registration needed. Um, All ages are welcome. I mean, it's food, fun, and beer, celebrating community and wellness and gardening. It's a win for everybody in the family, uh, especially if the weather's beautiful, even if the weather's not beautiful. Again, food, uh, food, family, fun, and beer, so you can't really beat that. Gardens need rain, too, don't yeah, they? Yeah, that's right. In the <laughs> garden, yeah. Yeah, so terrific stuff, and, and we hope that everything works out gro- uh, great for it, and uh, folks can uh, 
uh, continue to support the community garden. If people want to get involved, Tristan, what should they do? So they can either visit our website, which is indianacommunitygarden.org, or they can send us an email, icg15701 at gmail.com. Again, that's icg15701 at gmail.com. I would also urge people to follow us on Instagram. So our Instagram is at indianapacg. Again, that's our Instagram, at indianapacg. Beautiful. Guys, thanks so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate it. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, WCCSradio.com. Just about 23 minutes after 9 o'clock. Boomer Sports coming up just a second or so, but we want to get to this morning's Money Matters report. Here's Aaron Rayall.